Hi everyone, thanks again for joining us here at City South Church, our uh, online for the summer. And uh, I just want to, have you ever experienced an obstacle course before? Maybe as a kid, you know, in gym class, they create an obstacle course, you know, to do different things. Uh, I think my sister, she has these two uh, dogs, German Shepherds, and they call it agility training. But really what it is, is this glorified obstacle course for dogs. And she has them like trained so well that they're going up and down and through and under things. And it's really quite fascinating to see these dogs navigate these uh, obstacles. Or, or I think my boys and I, we, uh, we enjoy watching sometimes. We kind of binge watched uh, something like those uh, uh, ninja uh, challenge, ninja warrior challenges, where it's basically these athletes that go through these intense obstacle courses and and if they fall often it's falling into water and it's and it's really me amazing because it starts off you know easy for them I think the first obstacle would be difficult for me but easy for them and it gets gradually harder and harder and harder and, and you're kind of cheering them on and they'll finish one round and whoever made it you know gets to move on to the next round and gets even harder and, and you start to pick some athletes that you're cheering for and what I found is sometimes before they start, you think, oh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the one that's going to go far. And they fall early. And other ones, you think, oh, they don't have a shot. And yet they make it super far uh, in the challenge. This summer, we're looking at different people in Scripture, uh, different characters each, each Sunday, in the Old Testament specifically. And what we want to remind ourselves is these are real people that had the same struggles, the same insecurities, the same hopes for their family and for themselves that, that we have today. We have more technology, but really the essence of what it is to be a human hasn't changed too much over the thousands of years. And we often forget about that when we read these stories or we talk about these stories, we tend to, to glorify these people. We kind of put them up on a pedestal and we forget they're, they're humans just like us. The God they serve isn't ordinary. He's, he's supernatural. He's amazing. But them, very ordinary. And you might feel ordinary, and I just want to say you are in good company. And this morning, I just want to take a moment and just talk about Moses. And really ask the question, in what ways are you like Moses? See, Moses would be considered one of the greatest leaders in Israel's history. Led them out of Egypt and through the desert, through some of the most spectacular stories in the history of Israel. But yet, when we look at Moses, we realize here's a guy that struggled. Here's a guy that doubted himself. Here's a guy that tried to talk his way out of the job that God wanted him to have. And re really the story of Moses is all of the book of Exodus. And I have no intention to reading the entire book of Exodus to you. But I want to highlight a few parts of the story from Exodus. And I want to read two verses from the, from the book of Exodus. And I encourage you maybe this week, pick up the Bible and read some parts of Exodus or, or even... Maybe on Netflix, I don't know exactly where it is, but uh, a cartoon like The Prince of Egypt or, or something like that, watch with your family and discuss the life of Moses. But I want to pick up here, Moses, he's, he's been raised in the palace, he's used to you know, extravagance, he's used to being at the top, the most powerful, and for reasons we're not going to explain here, he had to flee Pharaoh and his court and his family, and he went to the desert and he's living with the Israelites and he is a shepherd. And as he's tending his flock, he sees something that is odd. A bush on fire, but the, the, the bush isn't being consumed by the fire. The fuel, the wood isn't being burnt up. And so he goes and he looks at it and he is seeing what is going on here. What he realizes is God is in the burning bush. He, he's speaking to Moses. He, he's drawing Moses to him with that burning bush. And, and they begin to have a conversation. 
And what God's asking is, Moses, you need to lead my people out of slavery. You need to bring them out of slavery. I've heard their cries and it's time. And Moses doesn't respond with, man, if you're saying it's going to happen, I'm, I'm with you. Let's go. He begins to hesitate. He begins to come up with excuses about his lack of good communication skills, his lack of good leadership, his surely there's someone better than you. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11 and 12, this is the part of the conversation between Moses and God. Imagine God audibly speaking to you and your reaction is excuses. And this is what he says in verse 11. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out to Egypt? Have you ever felt like that? Maybe you felt God kind of nudging you. It wasn't a burning bush. It wasn't this audible voice. Maybe it was for you. If it was, please tell me. But maybe it's more of just a, a nudging. You should go talk to that person. Or maybe that neighbor, you should do something loving and caring for them. And you felt that nudging, and your response was, Who am I? Like, did they, if they knew my brokenness, if they knew my problems, if, if they knew how insecure I am, they knew how weak I was, like who am I? And this is the type of attitude and feeling that Moses is in. Who am I to do this? In verse 12, and God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. So where they're having this conversation, God's saying, you will worship me here, all the people of Israel. And that's the moment where you'll be like, oh man, God's been with me. But that line, I will be with you. It's this idea of all of those things don't matter. Your insecurities, the problems, the per it doesn't matter. Who is with you is all that matters. I will be with you, Moses. And because I will be with you, it doesn't mean that it will be easy, and we're going to see that in the story. But what I say will happen will happen. Where I'm leading you what to do, you'll be able to accomplish it, Moses. Not because of you, because I will be with you. How about you? Do you make excuses to God? Do you constantly look at yourself and your lack of talent or ability? The question that this conversation brings up is, who is with you? Is God with you? Then stop looking at yourself. Don't worry about whatever talent or lack of talent you have. Worry about who is with you. And so the story from Exodus chapter 7 to about chapter 12, it talks about the, the plagues that happen and, and these plagues that God brings to kind of wear down Pharaoh to let it let the Israelites go because he's refusing, he's hard-hearted. And, you know, there's stuff like the river, the main source of water turning to blood and, and then these plagues of like locusts and, and, and things coming and destroying crops. And, and it's, it's really terrible. And he, Pharaoh's still like, no, no. No, I'm not going to let your people go. And all through this time, people, Israelites are even questioning Moses. And all God's saying is, trust me, Moses. Trust me, Moses. So finally, it's kind of like the end of the rope for Pharaoh, the last straw. And God tells Moses to tell the people, the angel of death is going to come and kill the firstborn every household but if you sacrifice a lamb and take the blood and put it over your doorpost so up and down your door the angel of death will pass over your house and go to the next house that's what happened all of Egypt there was great mourning because the firstborn died in many many houses 
And, and to this day, the Jewish people celebrate the Passover, they call it, because the angel of death passed over their house. Not, ce not celebrating um, the death of others, but celebrating the mercy that they were shown of the angel of death passing over. And, and this moment is reference to Jesus. That his blood allows us to experience mercy and grace of God. When we talk about the Israelites finding freedom from Egypt, the story of Scripture talks about how we can find freedom in our life from our own slavery to, to pride, to anger, to lust, to insecurities. We can find freedom from all those things. Why? How? Through Jesus and His blood. And so, and so this was the moment where the Israelites were finally set free. And I think Moses is kind of looking around going, oh my goodness, it's, it's happening. Can you believe this? Some scholars say it was a million people when you took men, women, children. Can you imagine a million people and their livestock all leaving? And they go to the desert. And when they get to the Red Sea, they've got the Red Sea in front of them. The desert behind them, the Egyptians. And Pharaoh's thinking, what did I do? My free labor is gone. And so he chases after them. He's going to slaughter them and bring, them, bring the survivors back to be slaves. And what do the people do? They doubt Moses. Why did you do this to us? Why did you bring us here? Why did you bring us here to die? We, we were better off as slaves. And what has hap happened? Who is with Moses? He turns to God. And God says, strike the sea. You know the story. The sea spreads apart. They cross. And when Pharaoh chases them, it comes over them and drowns them. Moses could have focused on all of his weaknesses, all of his brokenness. Moses could have focused on how he shouldn't be the one leading Israel out of slavery into a new life. But God kept reminding him, it's who is with you. I am with you. Trust me. It's not about giftings. It's not about talents. It's about me being with you, Moses. So don't worry about it. Do, do you ever feel insecure? Do you ever feel like you don't have enough to offer, not enough talents, not enough smarts, not enough influence, not enough ability. My response would be you're in good company. Th that is the story all throughout scripture. All of these people, they're just like you. They didn't have enough. I think all of them could resonate with Moses to say, who am I? And God's response to Moses, God's response all throughout Scripture, and God's response to you is, I am with you. So when you feel God nudging you and pointing you in a direction and challenging you to do something, well, when you don't even feel that, you just know that the right thing to do is to love others. And you try to step out and do the loving thing, and you feel dumb and you feel unqualified and you feel insignificant. Those are all who am I statements. What I want you to do is pause and say, God is with me. God is with me. And when you do that, I think you'll have stories of just God launching you forward into the mission that he has for you. My challenge is we'd be people that aren't perfect, that aren't great, that don't have it all together. We'd be people that know that God is with us. So I challenge you, live a life like that. We have lots planned this summer. We're going to be here online every summer or every Sunday uh, doing these, looking at a different person from scripture. You can go to our website, citycellchurch.com, and if you click the calendar, we have things happening for kids throughout the week. We have things happening for youth, uh, and you can see what's happening for adults. So I just challenge you to do that, and thank you so much for uh, joining us.